Hey everyone, it's Haley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my January TBR. So hello everyone and happy 2022. This is officially the first video that I'm filming in 2022. After doing Bookmas, I have taken a week off and I'm feeling refreshed and ready to go and ready to get back to things. So I hope that your year is off to a good start. Today I'm going to be talking about the books that I want to read this month. I have a really good stack here. I find that in January I generally kind of go for books that are a little bit bigger than what I would usually go for. I go for like the fantasies and the chunkier books that I'm kind of intimidated by and definitely at the end of the year I tend to stay away from so it's almost like I'm getting caught up on those or because it's like super snowy and very cold outside I just want to escape all of that and that's really reflected in this pile. Before we get into the books I did want to take a second to thank the sponsor for today's video Babbel. I'm super excited to be working with Babbel once again. Sponsors like this make it so I am able to continue to make content for you guys all the time. Now as you guys know I have been working on learning French for a really long time now. I can't even remember when I actually started but I have been putting a lot more time and effort into it since moving to Quebec because Quebec the first language is French and where I live it is especially a more French area. So Babbel has been a really vital tool in my journey to learn French especially with now there being a lockdown. I was taking in-person classes as well but those have been shut down and being able to have classes right on my phone is so helpful. Babbel is teaching you real world and practical conversations which is exactly what I need when it comes to learning French and the lessons are short about 10 minutes or so and interactive. The lessons are also developed by actual real language teachers. It features award-winning technology that is scientifically proven to get you speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. It also offers something for everyone. There's not just one way to learn. There's podcasts, games, lessons, live lessons with teachers. There's something that literally no matter what your learning style is, you'll be able to find something that works for you. They also have a 20 day money back guarantee. So if you're worried about it not working for you, you don't have to worry about that anymore. With it being a new year, it's the perfect time to take on the goal and new year's resolution of trying to learn a new language. And whatever language works for you, Babbel has it. Thanks to Babbel, I am able to introduce myself now. Bonjour, je m'appelle Haley, j'ai 25 ans. I forgot how old I was for a second there. <laughs> what a struggle. If you guys were interested in checking out Babbel, I definitely recommend it. I will have a link down below for you guys to check it out and you can also get speaking whatever language you want in just three weeks. And don't forget about the 20 day money back guarantee. And in addition to that, they are also offering 65% off of a subscription. Now with it being the new year, it's the perfect time to set those new year's resolutions into action make the plans, do the work, and Babbel is here to help you with that. So thank you once again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. So now to get into the books that I am hoping to read in January. I actually have already read some of these, so I am going to go over those first. I got off to a pretty good start for the beginning of this month, and I've already read four books. I'm not going to be really going into thoughts yet because I will do that in a recent reads video soon, but the first book I have here is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. I actually Actually ended up finishing this earlier today and this is about a girl who ends up as part of an FBI investigation and it's because there has been this drug like it's meth but it's worse than meth and they suspect that whoever has been creating this drug also has knowledge of Ojibwe medicine so our main character uses her own knowledge of Ojibwe medicine and she partners with the FBI to try and get to the root of this as this drug has really been like affecting her own life personally and it has been completely ravishing, ravaging, not ravishing, ravaging her community. This book taught me so much about Ojibwe culture. It was really well done and it's not something I would generally pick up, but I'm glad I did. And I will go more into that when I talk about like my review of it and everything. Next is The War Outside by Monica Hesse. I actually had this book picked for my unwrapping vlog where I had my boyfriend wrap some books for 
for bookmas and this was one of them and I didn't end up getting to it in that vlog but I did decide to start out the year with it and I'm glad that I finally read this book. It is about internment camps or incarceration camps is actually what they're preferred to be called but it is set in Texas in Crystal City which is this giant camp and you're following two characters. One of them is a Japanese prisoner and the other one is a German prisoner and it's their relationship blossoming in this terrible place and also their experiences and everything and it definitely like Monica Hesse is a fantastic historical fiction author. She has quickly made her way into my auto by authors honestly. I also picked up Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I have yet to finish the Caraval series but I have read her new book and I'm sad to say I was kind of let down by this one. I'll go more into that later but this is about a girl who she grew up in her father's curiosity shop and she ends up making a deal with the Prince of Hearts and yeah, it's just, uh, I'll talk about it more when I actually talk about my thoughts on it. And the other book is the one that I'm currently reading and that is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is the second Elizabeth Lim book that I am reading and I'm not really liking this one as much as the first, but I will like withhold judgment until I'm done. I'm probably about a third of the way through this one. It's about a girl who is a princess who has magical abilities and she's not supposed to. And she ends up seeing her stepmother performing magic and she sees something that she's not really supposed to. So as punishment for that, she ends up turning all of her brothers into cranes. And if she tells anyone of it, if she like makes a sound, then a brother will die for each sound that she makes. And she also has a bowl on her head. I believe this is dealing with mythology. I'm not entirely sure. I totally miss the bowl part, but either way, it's a very interesting story so far. I'm just not so sure how I feel about it. So those are the books that I've read. Now getting to the rest of the piles that I have here, which are books that I would really like to read this month. So we have The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I'm sorry that I forgot who this was by. This is the sequel to The Inheritance Games, which I read in... 2020? I think I read that one in 2020 and I really enjoyed it. It's very, once again, kind of a different book than I would normally read. It is kind of a mystery story, like there's a lot of intrigue to it. So essentially you're following this girl who comes from nothing. She is very much struggling to make ends meet to support her and her sister, but then she ends up inheriting the fortune of this billionaire and she never met him. So there's a lot of questions as to like why she inherited inherited the fortune. His family feels very snubbed about the whole thing, obviously, and in order to get it, she has to stay on their estate with his three grandsons. I think there's three. I can never remember if there's three or four. So I'm going to have to refresh my memory on what happened in the last book and then I definitely would like to get to this one soon. I actually have a couple of sequels on this list overall. I guess I'm just kind of like getting caught up on sequels. So next is Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the sequel to Kingdom of the Wicked which I read in 2020 and I really liked it and I need to definitely refresh myself on what happened in that first book because I actually had started listening to the audiobook for this one and I felt so lost about what was happening but the reason that I think I may not have enjoyed this one so much is that they're kind of similar in a way so I feel like this book just kind of does it better. This kind of deals with witches a little bit but it's about a girl whose twin ends up being murdered and she teams up with this demon prince to figure out who did it and what happened because it was like a very brutal murder. So there's a lot of like romance going on in there, all of that stuff, but I'm really intrigued to see what's going to happen in the next book. I'm just gonna have to remember what happened in the first book first, but my memory is absolutely horrible. I guess I'll just talk about the only other sequel that I have on this list here. So that is Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book. I'm not sure if it's gonna be the final or if there's still more to come for the series, but of the Skyward series. And I have really enjoyed that series so far. I read the second book in January of last year. So now it seems like the perfect time to read the third. I just, I really enjoy the characters. The second book went a very different way than I was expecting so I'm intrigued to see how the third book is going to go who it's going to follow like where it's going to be set because the second book kind of just expanded the world so vastly that 
I'm not really sure what to expect from this one, but this is actually a sci-fi series, which I generally don't really enjoy sci-fi, but this series is an exception. I really love it. So I'm thinking that this one is going to be one that I'm gonna have to pick up very soon. Next is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I have been talking about this book so much because I've just been dying to read it and I just haven't gotten to it yet. So I need to change that because I have the sequel now. There's no more excuses. But this is a historical retelling of Romeo and Juliet and it has been super super hyped up on TikTok so maybe I should do this in a reading vlog where I'm reading some TikTok hyped reads. Would that be fun? I don't know. Let me know if you would like to see that. But it is set in 1920s in Shanghai and it is following rival gangs and that's where the Romeo and Juliet story unfolds. I'm just so intrigued by this book and I need to finally read it because I've had it for a couple of years now and it's just sad that I haven't done that yet. Next is The Bones of Rune by Sarah Raleigh. This is set in Victorian England and it is following an African tightrope walker. So she's very used to being like the spectacle of colonial gaze but she actually has this secret ability which is that she can't die so I'm just I've been talking about this book a lot lately but it's because I'm really intrigued by that concept everything about it seems like something I would love and I need to read it I also didn't even realize that the author is Canadian it says that she grew up in southern Ontario whenever it says someone grew up in, in southern Ontario I always assume it's like Windsor or near Windsor because Windsor is as far south as you can possibly go in Canada, also Ontario, but I'll have to look and see where she's from. Next is Echoes and Empires by Morgan Rhodes. Like I said, I have so much fantasy on this TBR. I definitely will be sprinkling in some contemporary through there. I'm just not exactly sure which contemporary books I'm going to want to read. However, this is the latest release from Morgan Rhodes. She wrote the Falling Kingdom series and A Book of Spirits and Thieves, and I I think this is her first book in quite a while, so I was really excited to see that. This is about a world where magic is, once again, it's forbidden, but it's also like a sickness, which is very interesting. So the main character ends up getting infected by magic, and she ends up hiring this wanted criminal who is going to help her to get rid of the magic, but in exchange, he's actually going to take it for himself. So that seems intriguing. Next is actually a contemporary book that is written in the stars by Alexandra Belfleur, Alexandria Belfleur. So this is actually set in between Christmas and New Year's, and I didn't even realize that. I'm not exactly sure if it is like a holiday sort of story, so maybe I should save it. I don't know. Let me know if this is kind of Christmassy. However, I do know that it is about an astrologer who agrees to fake a relationship with an uptight actuary with results not even the stars could predict. So we've got fake dating here, which I tend to love, and their arrangement expires on New Year's Eve, which is why I'm not sure if this is a holiday story. But do let me know. I know I've heard some really amazing things about about this one, so I'm looking forward to seeing what all the buzz is about. Next is a book that I've been waiting for so long to read because I waited so long to pick it up and then I finally decided to just do it, and that is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I think this is one that I'm definitely going to be prioritizing because I tend to really just fly through Trisha Levenseller's books. So Blade of Secrets was one of my favorite books that I read last year, and the sequel is coming out later this year. However, this book came out before that and I was very intrigued by it. I just, I wanted the paperback, but the paperback doesn't come out until like 2024, which is ridiculous. So I just went for it and got the hardcover. Now this is about a girl who she wants to overtake, I think it's the Shadow King. She like, Okay, there we go. I knew it was like a three-step process. So, Alessandra is tired of being overlooked, but she has a plan to gain power. Number one, woo the Shadow King. Number two, marry him. And number three, kill him and take his kingdom for herself. So, it seems super interesting because it's going to be more of like an anti-hero story and... I haven't read much like that, but I tend to really enjoy those. So I think this is going to be a darker fantasy and I'm really excited for it. Next is another contemporary. It's the only other contemporary that I have on here. Also, I'll probably be getting to some more historical fiction. I just didn't like specifically know which ones I was going to want to get to, which is why I kind of left it off of here. But I will talk about some more in my winter TBR video, which is going to be coming out later this week. However, 
the next book that I wanted to talk about is You Can Go Your Own Way by Eric Smith. Eric Smith is the author of Don't Read the Comments, which I really liked. And this book is actually set during a blizzard, which is why I felt like it was perfect to read. Actually, today would be a great day because it's been like pouring snow nonstop, but that kind of has just become my reality now. Like I know I'm Canadian, but I come from somewhere where we do not get a ton of snow. We have pretty mild winters. It's one of the hottest places in Canada and I'm so not used to the cold here and the amount of snow. Like I haven't seen the grass since I went home to Windsor, honestly, but that is besides the point. So this is about a boy who he has this arcade that he loves and it's the last piece that he really has of his father, but it's being threatened to be closed because there this like guy who is coming in and turning it into these lifeless chain gaming cafes so he has a daughter and like the two of them have an enemies thing but then they end up getting stuck in the arcade during a blizzard together sounds super cute the last three books that I have here are of course fantasies because that's just that's just how things have been going but defy the night by Bridget Kamarmer I had not heard of this book then I found out about it during book miss for videos and now I just have been really wanting to see what all the buzz is about. I don't even remember what it's about to be honest, so I'm sorry. But it says, a kingdom divided by corruption, the king desperately holding it together, and a girl willing to risk everything to bring it all crashing down. So this has had a lot of hype. It's by the author of A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and I wasn't a huge fan of A Curse So Dark and Lonely, so I'm hoping that this one is going to be a different situation for me and that I will like it fingers crossed. Next is Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. This is the third book by Margaret Rogerson and I have read all of her books so far and really liked them. They're pretty easy fantasies and this one is about like nuns and they're cleansing the bodies of the dead so then they won't like rise again but then they do end up there's like this army that ends up rising again and attacking the covenant covenant no that's not the word convent why did I just blank on that word? <laughs> but they attack the convent and the main character ends up awakening this old spirit to save them all, but that obviously kind of poses a problem as well. And finally is Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. I've been really excited since I've had this book because it's about a night zoo. Like it just seems so intriguing. I don't know what it is about like zoos or circuses or anything like that, but it just makes me want to read it that much more. And that's definitely the case with this book. I'm getting kind of like Fantastic Beast vibes a little bit. And I really liked the Fantastic Beast movie because I love animals like that. Like I've been obsessed with Pokemon lately. I mean, the first Pokemon game that I remember remember playing like actually getting through the games are the ones on Switch because I did casually play the ones on Game Boy but I didn't have the attention span to actually play the entire thing so I did like Pokemon and like the cards and everything but I never actually played the game so now I've been playing all of the Switch games and having a really good time with it so basically that's to just say like I love anything with animals or creatures and that's exactly what this has in it. The main character she's working at this night zoo to pay off her family's debts and this night zoo has like a bunch of dangerous and weird creatures so I'm intrigued. Okay, so those are all of the books that I wanted to talk about that I'm hoping to read this month. We shall see how things go because I'm also starting my internship this month, so I probably won't have as much reading time as I would like, but that's starting at the end of the month, so I'm hoping to like get to as many books as I possibly can before that starts. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you also once again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check them out in the link down below and I will see you guys in another new video soon. Bye!